This is Dan Abbott, and I'm doing this video to show you how to use DraftSite to create um, objects that have tangent arcs. We're looking at the head gasket from a Briggs & Stratton small engine. This is the kind of part where if you take a look at it, it's quite thin. We go between the head and the block on that engine. And so in order to draw this, you would simply draw it from one position, turn that into lines, it would look like that, and that's the uh, shape that we're going to draw now using draft site. Go back to a drawing of it, drawn with dimensions. This is an orthographic drawing only in the sense that it is a direct line 90 degrees from the top view um, drawing. There's nothing projected off of it because there's no point in drawing the thickness of this part since it's uniform throughout. Whenever you create anything using a CAD system, what you want to do is to first look at that part and then locate repeatable patterns and symmetry. This gasket clearly is symmetrical right down that center line. And so there's no point in drawing the entire thing twice. We'll do most of our work in the top view and then we'll mirror it to the bottom. We also have a repeatable pattern, which is those holes right there. So that hole right there could be the first one we draw and then we can do a polar array. The polar array will place the, uh, the hole in a pattern for us. We'll have to indicate that we want it to complete a 60 plus 60 is 120 plus 60 is 180 plus 60 is 240 degree fill. Uh, there are five of these entities. We're going to just equally space them or space them 60 degrees. Either one of those options is available. There are a lot of tangencies here, however. We're going to take advantage of the tools built into AutoCAD and any, I mean, I'm sorry, DraftSite. You'll notice this uh, exercise was developed for AutoCAD, but DraftSite is, in fact, an AutoCAD workalike. So the same approach you're going to use in DraftSite would be the approach you would use in AutoCAD itself. So what I'm going to do is start by placing that location, the center of those large arcs. I'm going to place those at 5, 5, and then I'm going to build this gasket. There are all kinds of ways to approach this, by the way, and the more complex a part gets, the more ways there are. As long as your geometry is accurate when you're done, it doesn't really matter what approach you use. So this is going to be one approach, but I'm using it to show you several different things involving the software. A couple things as far as reading this print goes. When you see something that says 8x, as in right here, means there are eight places where that feature appears. Eight means is five of them here, six, seven, eight holes. Six X means six places. Six X is given right there. There's a radius of 0.4. There's one, two, three, four, five. And then that one right there, since it has no other dimension, must be the sixth one. So that's the six places. There are two places with a radius of 0.6, this one and this one. There are actually two places with a radius of 0.8 as well. Um, that is probably something that it should have been a 2x put there, but on a symmetrical part like this, where the symmetry goes right down the middle, if you see one dimension on one side, you can assume it's the same on the other side, and that's why you don't have dimension for one on this side and one on that side as well. Let's go over to draft site and start drawing. Um, I have a uh, drawing set up, object lines, so I'm going to jump right in and draw a circle. I'm going to ask for the center, I'm going to type 5, 5, and the radius I'm going to use on this, and it's asking for radius, by the way, and that's the default in both AutoCAD and DraftSite. I'm going to type a 1.9 for my radius on the outside. Enter, at, enter. What that allows me to do by pressing enter, it repeats the last command. By typing the at symbol, it selects the last point that I entered, which is, means I'm going to draw concentric circles. I'll draw 1.5 on this one. Now, just to make it easier for you to visualize what I'm doing, I'm also going to add another circle with 1.8, and I'm going to take that and place it on, well, you know, let's make an object, I mean, let's make a, a layer for center lines. So we'll just go over here, start with zero, create a new layer for center lines. We'll give that a color of magenta. I'm not going to make it a center line type just yet, and you'll see why in a little bit. I'm going to pick that line that I just drew, that circle that I just drew, and put on the center layer. So I'm just using that as a construction line right now, um, and that's why I put it on a layer other than the object layer. So I'm going to start by drawing another circle right on the quadrant of that construction line. And I'm going to give this a radius of 0.4 as well. So circle, coordinate, 0.4, Try that once again, circle on that quadrant right there, 
That's what I wanted it to do. Okay, now we'll go back and we'll do a quick trim on this because we know we want to trim from here to here. We want to get rid of that. We want to get rid of this. The reason I'm drawing that right now is because that nose, that little tab that comes out, defines the overall length of this part. So I'm now going to start by drawing a line. I'm going to hover over the quadrant, be the midpoint in this case. Just move directly to the right after I've done that. I'm going to type 5.7. That gives me the starting point for another line. I'm just going to draw that line straight up, straight up, one. Okay, so that represents the overall dimension of this part, and that's why I'm doing it right now. Now I'm going to draw another circle. This circle is going to be um, drawn from, and I just held the shift key down and right clicked so that I can do what's called an override object snap. I can say starting from that center right there. I want to go over, so at means starting from the last point that I just picked, which was that center. I'm going to go over at 2.2, comma, and I'm going to go up 0.7 in order to draw a circle that has a radius of 0.8. What I'm drawing is that arc right there. The 2.2 came from here. The 0.7 came from here. And by using the from option, it allows me to locate the center of that circle relative to the point that I picked over here, which was the center of that circle. So that was the use of the from object snap. Uh, we'll use it again right here. We'll draw that arc and that circle, both of which are concentric, 0.52 over from here and 1.1 up from there, which is 1.8 minus 0.7. So that's 1.1. So over 0.52 up 1.1. We go back to draft site, go back into the circle command. Once again, shift, right click, say from that point right there, Oops. wrong point, shift from that point right there, go at 0.52 comma 1.1. Circle comes in the right location. Um, I'll put an arc there of 0.4, which apparently is not what I just typed in. Do it again, circle from that center right there, go at 0.52 comma 1.1 and the radius of this is 0.4 that looks a little better. Enter, at symbol enter, D for diameter 0.35 and now we have a circle there that's 0.35. Now what I'm going to do is to um, construct another construction line. and I'm going to put this on the layer called Sen. So I'm going to draw a line right now that goes from the center of this arc right here. And what I want to do is to go up through at an angle of 30 degrees from vertical. I have polar tracking set so that it's got an incremental angle of 30, which works very well for this. So in other words, that would be straight up and down. It would be 90 degrees. 30 over from that would be 120. I'm going to draw that line in and I'm also going to draw this line in just so that I have some locations that I can put some other features. So I'll draw a circle now that goes to that intersection right there and that is also going to have a radius of 0.4. Draw another circle in the same location with a diameter point. I don't need that one actually. No, nope, I'm going to wait on that. So I'm done with that. I'm just going to take that circle and I'm going to put it on the object layer. Once again I'll go into the trim command I'll say trim this from here and here. So we can get rid of that. We can get rid of this. And now I've got that tab right here as well. Might as well mirror this. So it goes down below like that. And as long as I'm right here, I'm going to trim that out as well. Okay, now what I want to do with this top is to draw a line that goes from here to here. And I want that line to be tangent to that arc and tangent to this one. So I go into the line command. When it asks me for a start point, if I go and just try to hover and get one in the running object snaps, I can get quadrants, I can get centers, but I can't get tangent because it's not set up as a running object snap right now. If I hold the shift key down and right click, tangent is one of the options as an override entity snap, which means now I can say let's do a tangency and you can see there's three little dots, which means okay, we don't know exactly what the tangency is going to be until you pick the other endpoint. So we'll defer that tangency. So you notice no matter where I go, the line will be tangent. Shift right click 
tangent once again, come over here now. Now I've drawn a line that is tangent to both of those arcs. I'm going to put it on the object layer. And now I'm going to set my object layer as current because I have some other things to draw in there as well. Draw another line starting from the end of this, which I can snap to using a running entity snap. Shift, right click, go back to tangent. Now I come up here and there's only one tangency here because I established the beginning of the line already. There's no deferred tangency required. If I go over to trim, pick this line and this line is cutting edges. Allows me to get rid of that arc right there. And as long as we're in the neighborhood, I want to put a fillet that goes right in here. Um, we'll see if uh, draft site lets me do that. The fillet command is over under modify, which is right there. So I pick the fillet command and I'm going to put a fillet between here and here that has a radius of 0.6. Try that once again. Oh, I have to set the radius first. So fillet R for radius 0.6. Now I'm going to pick this edge, and I'm going to pick this edge, and yes, it puts a uh, an arc right there. Now I can't do anything with this just yet. I'm going to trim it later on, but right now I'm ready to do some mirroring. So I'm going to go over to the mirror command, to that little bell right there. Select that line. Use a crossing window to get these objects. I'm not going to pick that line, actually, and I'll show you why in a minute, because if I did, I'd have two short line segments that lined right up, and I don't think that's a good idea. So I'll pick that arc that circle and then I'll pick that arc. Now enter. I'll pick the center of this whole gasket. Go over to the left. Now I'm going to take this line and instead of having mirrored one section of it, I'm just going to drag it down until it touches so it comes in like that. There's one more place to put a fillet right here. So I go back to the fillet command with a radius of 0.6. Uh, actually that's the wrong radius. Fill it with a radius of 0.4. And I know that if I look at the handout because there's no dimension placed on here. There's two of these and we can see what they are, but there are six of those and that's the sixth one. So now I'm got, I've got a fillet with a radius of 0.4. Pick those two points like that. Now, when I trim this, I'm going to be very selective. I'm going to pick that arc, this arc, and this arc so that I can trim these edges all the way back to there. Now I'm going to go back to the trim command and I'm going to pick that edge and that edge so that I can clean that up like that. Now most of the gasket is in place. There is a hole that has to get put in right here. In order to get that hole in there, what I need to know is how, uh, how to locate it. It is not concentric with this arc and the reason I know that is because it shows it's 0.4 over and it's right on the center line. So 0.4 over from that point right there. So we go back to draft site I'm going to draw a circle now. Uh, I'm going to use the From option one more time. So right click From. I'll select that point right there and type at 0.4 comma negative 1.8. Brings it right down on the center line. It's got a diameter of 0.35. Oh, I've got that hole in place. Now what I want to do is to use the array command to create a repeatable pattern. If we take a look at the holes, there's a hole here and it arrays around. And the array in, in draft site is always done counterclockwise. If you want a, an array that goes clockwise, you have to type in a negative value. So I'm just going to draw that hole right there. We're going to array it around. So we come over, go into circle command. I'm going to go right to that intersection right there. I'm going to type D for diameter, 0.35 is the size. But before I array it, I'm going to create a center mark for myself. Now AutoCAD and draft site both share the same limitation is that they don't create circular center mount lines that are correct automatically. So I'm going to draw a little bit of a construction line in here. I'm going to go back to layer zero to do that. I'm going to put a circle right here that has a radius of 0 0.06 which is approximately a sixteenth of an inch. I'm going to draw another circle right here that has a radius of 0.12. I'm going to go back to the circle command back to the circle command, grab that intersection, radius of 0.12. Those two lines represent the logical distance for a crosshair so that if I then trim between them I end up with a crosshair if I were to erase my 
construction lines. That's what a crosshair should look like. Bring it back because I missed one when I was doing my trimming. Okay, so now I'll go back into trim. That line, that line, that line, and this line. Now I'm going to just take those two lines right there and delete them. So there's the crosshair that I want at each one of these right. So the hole is put in the right position now. It's at 30 degrees. I've got my crosshair that I created by putting the two circles and trimming. I'm now going to draw another circle at the center of this over here and that's going to have a radius of 0.12 so that I can use it as a trim line. Get rid of this and then get rid of this and get rid of that and the idea is I run a repeatable pattern and since that arc starts 1.2 from the center of this circle it should go within 1.2 of the center of the other circle. I'm also going to draw a circle at the center of the big arc 0.12 and I'm going to trim that out as well for the same reason I showed you earlier that this should be a little gap there. Now let's see if I can make this one work a little better. The command is array and it's right there. We're going to do a circular array. The entities I want are all of these entities are right there. I want a an array around the center so I'm going to select it right there and now I have angle between in total number of elements. I'm going to change that to fill angle in total number of elements. 240 and 5 is what I want. I'm going to go to the preview button. The preview button shows me what it'll look like. If you take a look, that's exactly what I want. If I want what I see, I press enter or right click. If I don't, I can press escape and go back and make some changes. Since I like it, I'm going to press enter. The thing I want to do is to get rid of this line right there. Um, and now I've got my circular pattern and I've got my circular center line. So one last thing on this one, and this actually represents what at the moment I consider a glitch in draft site. Uh, I'm going to use a command known as a dim sen, a DC, dim center. DC is the alias for it, and it allows me to select an arc and have a center mark placed there. Well, there's an option in AutoCAD, and it appears to be an option in draft site as well for putting extension lines on that center mark but it doesn't work at least it doesn't work right now if I were to go into my dimension style manager which I do by coming here like this and I go down to radial diameter dimension center mark display I should be able to say put a center line in there so that it's an extension line and the mark size is set to 0.12 I come back out here now when I type DCE, I should be able to select this and get a center mark with extension lines, but for some reason draft site does not put the center mark in, it just puts four individual extension lines. So what I'm going to do to fix that is I'm going to go back, I'll leave it set that way, and that again is in the center mark display. So I'm going to leave it set with a center line, and I'm going to place a radial dimension on this, because if I place the radial dimension and put it in the right location, it will give me the center mark that I want. Unfortunately, when you go with the command line and do DCE, you get a center mark that's the correct size if the size is set to 0.12. For the dimension style, though, you have to set the center mark to 0.06, which means you have to set it to half its size. That's one of those things that I hope will get fixed. So we'll see uh, in the next release if that gets better. So my 0.06 size is going to be from where the two crosshairs cross throughout their, their overall length. I'm going to put it, in, put it in as a center line, and I'm going to be using a um, dimension command for the sole purpose of getting a center mark right now, which means I'm not going to explode that dimension, erase the things I don't want, keep the things I do want, which is the center marks with the extensions, because even with all that work, it's a lot less work than putting them in by hand. Now that I've got those, I can say let's mirror those around that center mark here. Bring it over straight. It goes down like that. I'll do the same thing up here. I'm going to use a diameter center, a diameter dimension. Put it on here. Explode what I get. Normally, by the way, you would never explode a dimension. It's a very bad idea. But now that I've got that, I can just copy it. I'll copy all of those lines right there, put a little window around them like this, a little around, window around them like that. Go to the center, go 
go to the center of this, go to the center of this, and when I'm done, that's a completely dimensioned uh, part. It would probably be a center mark that came straight up and straight down as well, um, but for my purposes right now, that looks pretty good.